This shotgun, I think, needs no introduction. But why not give it one anyways? This is the AA-12, which stands for one of two things. The original 1972 acronym was Atchison Assault Shotgun, but in 2005 it became the Auto Assault Shotgun uh, when it just kind of went through its development, changed hands, changed ownership. It's got kind of a weird history, but not a really exciting one because as cool as this thing is, it wasn't heavily popularized because it didn't really get picked up by any major militaries. It's very cool, but a lot of people thought, you know, what is the utility of a fully automatic shotgun? So let's, well, it looks like I accidentally dominoed some of my magazines here. I'm going to uh, next go to these here. The first rounds that you saw, these red ones are 12 gauge buckshot and these ones are slugs. So this is just like a single large projectile, not as accurate as a bullet because this is smoothbore, doesn't have any rifling. So the bullet doesn't spin or the projectile doesn't spin and it's not stable in the air, but it is still kind of more precise uh, coming out of the shotgun than just a, a spread of pellets. So let's talk a little bit about how this thing works and uh, what makes it interesting. You can see it's got this kind of futuristic looking shape despite the fact that the design is so old. It fires from an open bolt position so this is the ready position. Uh, as we talked about in some earlier videos, this is uh, an older design that was good for a lot of machine guns because it kept things open. But at the same time, um, that openness that aids with cooling is not beneficial for debris. So this thing was originally blowback operated, but they changed it over to a gas system, which is very similar to what the AR-15 uses. Well, it's the exact same thing. And one of the advantages that they believe that they achieved from that was the recoil damping system. So the idea here is that the bolt has a really long travel. The spring, the recoil spring is extremely long and the gas system is designed such that all three of those things working together kind of changes the recoil impulse from the bolt coming forward, sending the round off and then cycling the action. So as this thing comes backwards, it doesn't really slam into the back. Uh, it actually travels much further back, if you can imagine it. It'll come back to you about here. So as this bolt is flying backwards, that time that it has to travel is what allows this thing to have a more smooth recoil impulse. So instead of this bolt flying backwards and hitting the back and just kind of giving you a little shock there, this smooth travel all the way back there gives it this you know, easier feeling on your shoulder. So it's not like the recoil is gone because the projectile is still going out the barrel. You still have the same amount of force being imparted on you, but it's just smoother so it feels a lot less intense. So this is ready. And uh, this thing is really simple. You know, being fully automatic, you would think that it's uh, a lot more complicated, but in reality, it actually has a lot less moving parts than something like a semi-automatic AR-15. So let's try and be a bit more precise here. Take out some of those pots. Now, another interesting thing here, you can see that the sights are kind of backwards. <laughs> You've got the V in the back with just that bead up front. While, I mean, that is the same way you'd think like a, um, like a pistol would work. But just the fact that we've got the bead and this up, up in the back, which kind of looks like a front sight without the middle post, is just, uh, you know, initially feels backwards to me the way that it's flared out the way that it is. So one thing that we have to remember here is because these sights are so high to kind of keep them off the bore axis so that your head can kind of be a little bit more comfortable, when you get really up close, like we're shooting here, if you're aiming at this thing with the sights like this, you're actually going to be firing a couple inches lower because the sights are so high. So we have to compensate for that. Let's get back to our position and aim a little bit higher like so and we can get it. I'm not sure how many we have left in here. Woo! I think that was it. Cool, so just eight from this single stack box magazine. Looks huge, but 12 gauge rounds are gigantic. Uh, if we need to do some more damage, we can switch over to the drum magazine, which fires. How much do you think? It's actually just 20. <laughs> so it's a gigantic uh, drum magazine, but you know, still because it's a gigantic um, round, uh, that shell, doesn't have incredible capacity. So let's throw on some goodies first. I'm gonna throw on a suppressor here. Obviously this isn't threaded for this. And wow, <laughs> you can see it gets quite bigger to kind of accommodate the large caliber, so to speak. But it will work uh, here. 
you know, given how open this thing is, I don't know how well this could be suppressed. I would be interested to know uh, or to see someone do that in real life. Um, let's throw this on as well. You can see that the uh, sights disappear, which will be helpful, but it's still extremely low, so we're going to have to get really in close to the gun here. Uh, what can we do? Let's try and sweep side to side. I'm going to try and get everything here. Get that can, the pot, the can, the pot, the pot, and then uh, we'll finish off on that grouping back there if we can do enough damage to these up close. Ooh, <laughs> just enough to get this U-shaped group of targets, and I think we did some damage to the pot over there, but that was really strange to me hearing how quiet this thing was. Uh, you know, just a video game, but still a whole lot of fun to see stuff like that. Let's go back to loud mode. Sounds more powerful. <laughs> you know, that suppressor doesn't actually take any velocity off of the round, though. I only know that is true for rifles. I'm not entirely sure that that's true for shotgun shells. I have to look that up, so I don't want to have to speak before I do my research. So this is just another group of shells, and we can try and go out farther to that red plate and see if we can hit it. So this thing is fully automatic only, it doesn't have single option, but it fires slowly enough at about 300 rounds per minute that we can just tap the trigger and just do it in semi. Whew. So no last shot hold open, you can just, yeah, just how simple this thing is. Uh, part of its design here, you can see that this uh, groove here, this tracked area is what holds the magazine in place because there's not much of a mag well to hold it around there. And the reason this comes back there is because without it, this little guard here, this would be very flimsy. You could just bang that on the edge of a table, but this support there really just functionally helps it uh, maintain its perfect straightness. So what can we do next? Let's go back to quiet mode, make sure that we're in safe operating mode, despite the lack of a actual safety and throw some of these in. These are actually flares. So let us signal for help. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh man. I just wish, you know, we had access to stuff like this easily in real life and could just play around. I mean, <laughs> the amount of cost and destruction that we could bring about is, uh, I guess, nearly limitless, but it's, it's fun to imagine. So some of the last stuff that we have here is, uh, I think this is just regular buckshot, so let's fire that off somewhere quietly. Let's finish off these clay pots. <laughs> Those eight rounds just disappear. You know, that's the exact same amount you get from a lot of tube-fed shotguns, but when you're shooting and doing all your pumping, it, it feels like you've got a lot more going on, despite the fact you have probably the same amount of destructive capability. So let's save that one for last. I'm not sure if you know what those orange ones are, but they are exciting. So let's go for this magazine, eight rounds of just a smorgasbord of crazy stuff. I actually forgot what I loaded this up with, but I do know that the first one is buckshot. So let's uh, do this a little bit off the gun so we can see what happens. Try and aim at something. Uh, let's see if we can kind of hit that target behind the tree. Probably not since I'm, I'm doing something like even worse than hip fire. <laughs> well, I really should have loaded up a, a, a drum with every kind of uh, round imaginable because that, that was very short-lived and I almost forgot what it was because it went so fast, but we had some things like a, a triple hit, a flesh it round, a freedom fetty, which is just like red, white, and blue confetti, uh, and then the other stuff I don't think was easy to see. Uh, but since we do want something that's a little bit more exciting, we can throw this in, which is Dragon's Breath. This is like a sparkler mixed with a shotgun shell. Um, just kind of like all tracer, uh, buckshot, birdshot, I don't know. You, you've seen this, I'm sure. Uh, but if you haven't, and you just, or you haven't, you don't know what it was called, you will know in a moment. So we can actually take something out with this. Let's see if we can hit that tiny little pot. So we've got 20 rounds of dragon breath, dragon's breath. Let's see if we can knock it down. 
<laughs> oh, it's so quiet. <laughs> oh no, we ended up with uh, nothing left, obviously. So let's load this back up, should be pretty quick. We can just uh, use one of the new mechanics in here, go to something, let's load this up with some flares. Just hit that button, we have a full mag. And see if I can hit that target. Well, um, <laughs> I don't really, oh, I got it. I thought they were just gonna burn off before it got there. <laughs> we got some more. Let's just throw it at that, that far target. I probably, quit, probably should quit while I'm ahead, but I won't. Ah, uh, it doesn't have the range, I suppose. Maybe I needed to arc it in a little bit better. So let's, lastly, uh, what should we do? Some of these are, are less interesting visually. Let's go for the high explosive rounds. Now, has that loaded it up? Yes, it has. <laughs> Very cool. So we're going to try and walk it in on that far target. And you know what? Just for its destructive capability, I'm going to try and hit that, uh, what I believe is a hot dog shaped target behind that V shaped tree. So let's see how this goes. Okay. Need to dial it in a bit. Oh, that's going to be close. Oh no, I'm pretty sure we didn't hit him. All right, one more salvo. Oh, am I still low? Uh, okay, well, let's just prepare just in case I missed him with some uh, regular double lot buckshot. Throw that on my back, and we'll run on up. And I'll teleport up. Oh, 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 a little bit. We got him a bit. We kind of deactivated his gun, which I guess is the best way to go about um, a conflict is to just disarm. But uh, since we have an AA-12 and the destructive capability of it, it's time to show no mercy. <laughs> awesome. Well, there we go. AA-12 kitted up. Looking pretty sweet. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you had some fun. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments. Suggest uh, future weapons, and I'll see if I can get to those. But as always, like if you liked the video, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next video.